we have market equilibrium, chapter seven. We go down to the case study. Getting started, he said, if in any market, unless there is government intervention, the forces of supply and demand set the price. Prices. The price consumer pay for goods and services. The price where supply and demand are exactly the same. Look at the example below. So, except for government, if except for government intervention, that means government is taking charge. If government is not taking charge, the market forces of demand and supply decide price. That means price is determined by supply and demand, and the price where the demand uh, the price at which demand and supply meets is called equilibrium price. So we have the case study now. So table 7.1 .1 shows the, quant the quantities of a product that will be offered for sale by producers and purchasers, purchased by consumers at different prices in a given year. For example, when the price is CNY20, producers will, producers will offer 40,000 units for sale and consumers will want to buy 70,000 units. However, at this price, demand is greater than supply. This is not the price that will be charged in the market. So. At the price of 20 CNY, the quantity supplied is 40, the quantity demanded is 70. So that means demand and supply is not equal. So at this price, this is not the price the market will be charging because the market must charge a price that where demand and supply equals like 30. Like 30. Thank you. So the first question says, what price will be charged for the product in the above example? So the price that will be charged to reach equilibrium is 30. And if 30 is charged, 60,000 will be supplied and 60,000 will be consumed. I think that is yes. correct. Question two, how much is supplied and demand when the price is CNY 40? At the price of 40, 80,000 units supplied, 40,000 units were demanded for. So there's excess there. Question three, what will happen if we just set the price at CNY for the for these products. So for if producers try to charge the 40, they will try to charge $40 or 40 CNY per unit, they will be left with unsold stock. That means there's excess. So they will be left with stock that are not this sold. Demand. Supply. Supply. Supply, yeah. excess, yeah. Because the supply is higher than the demand. Demand, yes. So that is not the price they must charge. I think it's good. Yes. Okay. So that takes us to equilibrium. So for equilibrium, so for equilibrium, now we go to equilibrium price. The way in which the forces of supply and demand determines pr determine prices in the market can be shown on the graph, 7.1 which shows the supply and demand curves for a product. In any market, the price is set where the wishes of consumers are matched exactly with those of producers. This price is called equilibrium price. So there's always a, a price where the, uh, a price which consumers are willing to pay and producers are willing to, to sell. So that price is called equilibrium. So equilibrium price is the price of agreement between the quantity demanded and the quantity supplied. I think it's clear. So that's about equilibrium price there. So we we'll go down. They said the equilibrium price is also known as the market clearing price. Why do we call the equilibrium price the market clearing price? We call it the market clearing price because it is that price. At that price, the market will be cleared. That means all goods supplied into that market were sold. That means no goods were unsold in that market. That's why we call it the market clearing price because demand and supply have agreed on that price. So we call it the market clearing price. I think it's clear. So based on the graph we have here, we have where demand and supply curve meets. At that point where they meet is the quantity supplied. That means the equilibrium quantity. The price at which they meet is the equilibrium price. Do you get it? Yes. There's equilibrium point. The point at which demand and supply meets, there's equilibrium price. The price at which both demand and supply meets. Do you get it? Okay. So based on this graph, the equilibrium price is 30 and the equilibrium quantity is 3,000. I think it's clear. So that takes us to total revenue. What is total revenue? Total revenue is the amount of money generated from the sale of a goods, from the sale of goods, the amount you are gener you generated from the sale of goods. 
is called total revenue. So the formula is price multiplied by the quantity sold. The price of the product multiplied by the quantity of the products that were sold. That is total revenue. Is it clear? So we say price or TR is PQ. Any question about that? Okay. So here they said uh, total revenue. Like I told you, total revenue is price multiplied by quantity. So here they said uh, the, uh, the total revenue or total expenditure at the equivalent price. Total revenue is the amount of money generated from the sale of output. It is calculated by multiplying the price by quantity. So total revenue price multiplied by quantity. In this example, the share that, okay, that is done. Let's just go to the case study. Equilibrium price. So here we have different prices and quantity. The, the quantity demand, the equilibrium quantity is at six, where the price would be, at, this should be around 0.5. Do you get it? Yes. Okay, so our based on this graph, our equilibrium quantity is six million units and the price is 2.5, okay? Now go to the question. So the question says, what is equilibrium price and quantity? So equilibrium price is the price of agreement between the quantity demanded and quantity supplied. The yeah, equilibrium quantity is the quantity of agreement between the quantity demanded and the quantity supplied. Clear. That was the first one. Good. Question two. So what is meant by equilibrium price? Use this diagram in your explanation. So uh, equilibrium price is the price of agreement between the quantity demand and quantity supply. So according to the diagram, demand and supply curve met at a point where the price is 2.5. That's it, right? So that is equilibrium price. Then what is the value of the total revenue at the equilibrium price? You know, the total value, uh, the total revenue at equilibrium okay. price is 2.5 multiplied by 6 million, which is 15 million. Is it clear? Yes. So we go to shift in demand. So we'll go to shift in demand. So if the equilibrium price will change if there are changes in supply or demand. For example, if demand increases, price will rise. An increase in demand for the product is shown by a shift in the demand curve to the right from D1 to D2. This changes the equilibrium price because supply and demand are now equal at a different point. The price is forced up from P1 to P2 and the amount sold in the market has gone up from Q1 to Q2. If demand were to fall, the opposite would happen. The demand curve will shift to the left and the price would fall. So shift in demand means there's uh, there is changes in this demand curve. So if the price if price increases, if price rise, if price increases, demand the demand price. curve will shift. Right. It will shift if demand if price increases. This is it. An increase in the demand for a product. So if there's an increase in the demand for a product, the price would change. Will increase. You know we are talking about shift here. So talking about shift, we're not going to use price at the beginning. It's about demand. So if demand, we assume that demand increases first before the price. Did you get it? Yes. So then said the equilibrium price will change if there are changes in supply or demand. So it is about the changes in demand and supply, which brings about shift. So if demand, if the, the, if there's an increase in demand for goods and services, if there are, there's an increase in the demand for a product, the price of such products would rise. Shifting the demand curve rightward, then price will also increase from P1 to P2. Do you get the point there? Yes. So, as soon as the price increases from P1, you know, we said demand has, demand, the demand has increased. So, if demand increases, the demand curve will shift rightward from D1 to D2. The quantity supply or the quantity demanded in the market will increase from Q1 to Q2. As a result of that, the price in that market will also what? Increase by P1 to P2. Because when demand increases, it means if when demand increases, it means consumers want to buy more of that product. And firms, they will respond. Their response will be to increase the price. Do you get the point then? Yes. And if demand falls, the demand curve will shift left to, from D2 to D1, which means the quantity supply or the quantity demanded in that market will contract from Q2 to Q1 making the price of the products to fall from P2 to P1. Is it clear? Yes. So that is 
how demand increases. That, that is how price changes. Demand would have increased, then price would change. If demand falls, price will fall. Price will also change. I think the point is clear. Okay. So we go down. Shift in supply. Remember, supply is the quantity of goods. Firms are willing to produce or supply at a given price on time. That is supply. So there's always changes in supply too. And as soon as there's a change in supply, the equilibrium price will change. So I... An increase in supply of a product means that the supply curve will shift rightward from S1 to S2. So if this happens, the equilibrium price becomes what? The, the equilibrium price will fall because supply has increased in the market. If supply increases in the market, the price of the product will fall. And do you understand here? Yes, and if supply falls in the market, the equilibrium price will increase, will high. Do you get it? Because a fall in supply in the market will make the product to be scarce. As a result of that, price will increase. Do you understand? So that is about shifting demand and shifting supply. So we have the case study. Activity two. In 2015, the global price of the metal lithium rose sharply from $6,000 per ton to about $14,000 per ton in just a few months. The quantity of lithium demanded has increased due to its growing use in car batteries for electric cars and devices such as smartphones, laptops, and power tools. At the moment, the main, the main lithium, lithium ion battery makers are Samsung and LG of South Korea, Panasonic and Sony of Japan, and ATL of Hong Kong. But China also adds as many battery makers. The Chinese government is currently promoting the use of lithium ion batteries and electric vehicles, EVs, buses in particular. Sales of new energy vehicle in China increased by almost three times in the first 10 months of 2015, compared with the same period in 2014. Tesla Motors, a US EV maker, is starting large scale battery production in Nevada. It hopes to supply lithium ion batteries for 500,000 cars a year within five years. Much bigger car makers are also increasing their demand for lithium. Toyota has begun using lithium ion batteries instead of heavier nickel metal hydride batteries in its various model. Although the earth contains plenty of lithium, extracting it can be expensive and time consuming. Consequently, the higher prices may not auto automatically increase the supply of lithium. Figure 7.5 shows the global lithium between 2008 and 2015. So we have the statistics here from 2018 to 2015. So from 2018, it was $4,000. Now it is around $14,000 in 2015. So we'll go to the question immediately. The first question says, calculate the percentage increase in the price of lithium. So question one, calculate the percentage increase in the price of lithium in 2015 when it was from $6,000 to $14,000. So there's a percentage increase there. So the formula is the the first you have to take away the difference between them. That's fourteen thousand minus six thousand, which is eight thousand. So the change divided by the original price, which is six thousand, multiplied by hundred, gives us the final answer. There's a change in price, right? The change in price is from fourteen thousand to six thousand. The difference is eight thousand. So eight thousand divided by original price multiplied by hundred gives us one thirty three point three percent. Eight thousand multiplied by six. 8,000 divided by 6,000, which is the which was the original price, multiplied by 100. Ah, oh, by 100. Yeah, that gives us 133.3%. Is it clear? Okay. Question two. Why has the price of lithium increased? Use the supply and demand diagram in your explanation. The price of lithium has increased sharply due to an increase in demand. demand. Lithium is used in battery production and due to the growing popularity based on the case study. So. A lot of uh, for vehicles, demand for battery makers have increased. As a result of that, the demand for uh, because the demand for battery vehicles has increased, that means from D1 to D2, and the price will have increased from P1 to P2. So this is the graph, is that? But it's a big increase in price. See, based on the sixteen thousand or uh, fourteen thousand to six thousand. Clear. Yes. Question three. The said. What impact will a government subsidy paid to lithium producers 
have in the market. Use a sharply uh, a supply and demand diagram. So question three, with subsidy, they said, uh, what impact will a government subsidy pay to lithium producers have in the market? Use the supply and demand diagram in your explanation. With subsidy, with subsidy, it means the cost of production would fall. And if the cost of production falls, firms will be willing to supply more, shifting the supply curve rightward from S1 to S2, and the price will fall from P1 to P2. The quantity supply in the market will increase from Q1 to Q2. Did you get it? Okay. That's about that. So we'll go to shift in demand, shift in supply and demand. So shift in supply and demand, it is possible for both supply and demand to change at the same time in the market. For example, demand might increase and supply decrease at the same time. This is shown. So what we're talking about here is this. It is possible for demand and supply So demand can increase while supply reduces at the same time. But this situation, you, what you have to understand is that we cannot say exactly when demand and supply would increase. So they said, when there's a change in both supply and demand, it is not possible to show exactly what will happen to price and quantity unless it is known precisely by how much supply and demand shift. So we need to know how much demand is shifting, how much supply is shifting before we can make a graph for it. So, but you have to put in mind that there's possibility that demand increases while supply reduces, or supply increases while demand reduces at any point in time. You get it. So we'll go to excess now. So we'll go to excess demand. Excess demand. If the price charge in the market is below the equilibrium price, so plan and demand will not be equal. The equilibrium price is, okay. So for excess demand, excess demand is as a result of price being or falling below the equilibrium price. You know, there's equilibrium price, the price of agreement between demand and supply. So if the price charged in the market is below the equilibrium price, it means consumers have more reasons to buy for them. So the affordability for consumers increases. As a result of that, they want to buy more. Remember the law of supply or demand. The higher the price, the higher the quantity demanded. So if demand falls, the market price is the, is the price at which consumers are willing to pay, you know? So if, imagine, the price now falls below what, below what consumers are willing to pay, they will buy more. That brings about excess demand. So excess demand, excess demand is as a result of a fall a fall in price below the equilibrium price. Is it clear? Yes. That brings about excess demand. Then excess supply. For excess supply, we're talking about supply, the firms, the producers. They want to supply, they want to supply more to the market when the price increases, yes or no? Mm -hmm. So for, for excess supply to occur, it would have meant that the price has been charged above the equilibrium price. So if there's price, price above equilibrium price would bring about excess supply. Price below equilibrium price will bring about excess demand. So both excess demand and excess supply are disequilibrium because it means it is not it's not equal. Demand and supply are supposed to be equal, but whenever it is there is excess either in demand or supply, it means there is disequilibrium. Do you understand what disequilibrium is now? If the supply increasing, if supply if so excess, if the supply higher, if supply is more than, demand. more than demand, or if demand is more than supply, that is disequilibrium. It, the market is supposed to be in at equilibrium, but if there is either increase in supply or demand, there's disequilibrium. Yes. Do you get it? So excess demand, excess supply will bring about disequilibrium, clear. So that's the graph there, excess supply above equilibrium, excess demand below equilibrium. Now, removing excess supply and excess demand, this is, removing this, correcting this equilibrium. We have to correct this equilibrium because the market must equal. Demand and supply must equal. That is when suppliers will, bring, uh, will be able to supply and the consumer will be able to buy and the market will be cleared. So if the market doesn't clear, 
That means there's disequilibrium. So how do we correct disequilibrium? We can correct disequilibrium from the supply side because it's through the producers. Great. So if there's disequilibrium, for example, let's say uh, for disequilibrium, you can correct disequilibrium either by adjusting the supply or adjusting the price. That means a change in price. Yes. So let's assume there's excess supply in the market. If there's excess supply in the market, there's excess supply in the market. So firms, what can firms do to correct that disequilibrium? They can reduce the price. So reducing the price will increase the quantity demanded in the, in the market. And that could bring about equilibrium. Do you get it here? Yes. Or they, they reduce the supply to the market and keep them, stock them until another time when the demand will increase. So do you see what this, how to solve this equilibrium now? So for excess demand, to solve ex, to solve excess demand, because excess demand means the, the price has fallen below equilibrium price. So how do you correct such? You correct that by increasing the price. So when you increase the price, the quantity demanded in the market will fall, going back to equilibrium. Yes. Is it clear? Yes. So that's excess demand, excess supply, demand and the price. Price. So price would change, price would use to adjust to, to equilibrium. Supply in, the supply in the market. Yeah, both supply, demand. Demand, there's nothing about demand. It is about the price and the quantity supplied. So for if there's excess supply in the market, we can reduce the supply in the market or reduce the price to, to come back to equilibrium. Clear? So we have the multiple choice questions. They say which one of right, which one which of the following statement is true if the price is set below the equilibrium price in the market? If the price is set below equilibrium price, it brings about excess demand. Yeah. Did you get it? So the answer is C. Is it clear? Okay. Question two. If demand, of, if demand for a product falls and the supply increases, which of the following will happen? If demand falls and supply increases, price, well, price will, will fall. fall. Price will fall. Is it clear? Yes. Any question about that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have the case study. The market for FA Cup final tickets at Wembley. Every year, the FA Cup final is played at Wembley Stadium, London and the UK. Unfortunately, there are never enough tickets for all the supporters who would like to go. There's always a shortage. The English Football Association is aware of this, but says it would prefer to keep the tickets reasonable, reasonably priced so that their new footballers, football supporters can afford to go to the match rather than only the wealthy or those using corporate hospitality. Evidence of tickets shortages is presented by the price of tickets on unofficial markets. That is the black market. For example, sellers... On the Edinburgh based website, Football Ticket Pad, we are charging supporters up to 21,230 for a pair of a pair of 120 category tickets, including a 1,930 booking fee. This was for the final between Arsenal and Arsenal Villa in 2015. Figure 7.8 illustrates what is happening in the market. Note that the supply curve is vertical because supply is fixed. The capacity of the stadium is 90,000. So based on this graph. We see that the supply is vertical. It means it is fixed. It is just 90,000 capacity. It cannot be extended. It cannot be reduced. It's fixed. Mm -hmm. So we have P1, P2, and we have Q1, Q2. So we'll go to the question. What is the equilibrium price of an FA Cup ticket according to the diagram in figure 7.8? So according to the diagram in figure 7.8, where demand and supply meets is at P1, Q1. Did you get it? This is where supply and demand are equal. Clear. You go to question two. Assuming that the FA charges P2 for tickets, discuss why it does not charge the equilibrium price. It does not ch charge the equilibrium price. The English FA might not be able to charge at P2. Why? Because they want it to be affordable. It's not equal. It's not equal. That's not the reason why they are not charging it. They won't charge at P2 because uh, they won't charge. They said the English FA might not charge the equilibrium price because they want the new footballer to be able to watch the price, the game. You know, they said they want the new footballer to watch. 
Though, based on increasing demand, the FA can change the price. Instead of watching it for that amount, they can increase the price. But the FA does not want to increase the price. They want genuine footballers to, or the genuine supporters to watch the FA Cup final, the FA Cup final, not those that are wealthy. That is the point there. Do you get it now? Now, question three. If the average price of the ticket were 60, 60 pounds, what would the value of the total revenue be? The, we said total revenue is price multiplied by quantity sold, right? If the price is 60 pounds, the tot the quantity supplied is 90. That's 90,000 tickets. It's fixed. So it is 60 multiplied by 90,000. That's 5 million 400,000. Is it clear? Question four. If the FA Cup, if the FA could double the capacity of Wembley Stadium, what might be the effect on ticket prices? So the current capacity now the current the current capacity of new uh, Wembley is 90,000, right? So if the government of if the FA can or if the government can increase the capacity of Wembley Stadium, that means the price of ticket would fall. So instead of them to sell at night uh to sell at 60 pounds, they will sell less. Because remember that we said the, the, the higher the quantity of uh, when quantity supply increases, the price would fall. So here I wrote, I said I wrote if the, the capacity could be doubled, this will increase the supply of seats. As a result, the price of tickets might fall. The supply curve will shift rightward from S1 to S2. The quantity supply will expand from Q1 to Q2, while the price will fall from P1 to P2. Is it clear? And the last question there, question five. So to what extent the numbers are there? I think I got numbers on them. I got numbers on them, right? Yeah. Okay. Nine, 10, then 11. So question, uh, now they said, to what extent is there excess demand in this market? So excess demand, what does excess demand mean? Excess demand means the quant uh, the price is charged below the equilibrium price, right? Yeah. So here I wrote, excess demand exists when demand is greater than supply. So in this case, supply is Q1 and demand is Q2. When you look at it, go back to the graph. Supply is at Q1. Demand is at Q2. Do you see it? That is excess demand. Do you get it? So the quantity demanded is greater than the quantity supply. So the supply of tickets is fixed at 90,000. That's why it's vertical. But there are never enough tickets for the supporters because they said it already that the 90,000 tickets are not always enough. There are much more people that want to watch. Do you get it? So that means there's excess demand in the market for watching FA Cup final. Is it clear? So that ends equilibrium price. Any question about equilibrium price? Mm -hmm. Okay.